Hey guys, Meet Rebel Chris Tomer here with this Wednesday mountain weather update. Let's go to the Northeast where it is a rain event this morning. This is Killington. They're reporting a temperature of 37 and it is mainly rain. I looked at the top, up at the top there on the camera, and it is mixing with some snow at times, but this is a really warm storm system. Um, take a look at radar. It's mainly green, which is rain. Um, some snow mixing in in the, in the purple-pink shade right there at the highest of elevations, certainly up in the parts of Maine. And there is snow on the backside coming through Ohio and West Virginia, but it's mainly rain for the rest of today. Now, it probably turns over to some brief snow tonight into tomorrow morning, but it's going to be light. Uh, and then colder air does settle in for like two or three days. Um, and I do expect some lake effect snow behind the storm system as well. All right, let's go to the west. This is Colorado this morning. This is the view from Breckenridge, uh, and it is a cold morning with temps at about zero um, at, at tree line. And there is some wind up there this morning as well, 30 to 40 mile per hour gust. But that is the view from Breck after about uh, one and a half to two days worth of that northwest flow that kind of shrouded the high peaks with snow showers and wind. Here's radar out of the west. So what's going to happen next? Well, there's a small storm system that's going to move into California, Oregon, and then that's going to slide quickly through parts of Utah and Colorado and parts of Wyoming with some light snow, light to moderate snow accumulation. So that'll be an initial storm. And then there's a larger one behind it that will deliver heavier accumulations. And you can see it here on the water vapor. I'll mark all the features. Okay, so on this, your oranges and reds are your drier air aloft. The whites and the blues, that's your moisture aloft. So there's a little area of low pressure right here, and then a bigger cluster back here. And there's probably even another storm system behind that. So this little low will race into the interior. And then this bigger low will kind of follow suit behind it with a much better shot of moisture. All this being supported by a more active jet stream that is now sunk to the south a little bit and you can see the kinks the waves in this flow and i'll show you the jet in a minute all these storm systems will then try to move into the west okay here are my bullet points so this morning we've got rain in the northeast pretty much all day then it turns colder after this storm system this coastal storm system moves through now out west we've got two storm systems lined up there is a third there's some question though as to whether, and I showed it to you right here, as to whether the third storm system will survive. We'll have to wait and see, but right now, two storm systems. Um, now, there is going to be some weak to moderate atmospheric river moisture uh, with this for the Sierra, and I should show you that. Here's the IVT, the Integrated Vapor Transport Forecast, for that San Francisco Bay corridor up to the Sierra. And you can see a spike here in the Integrated Vapor Transport uh, between the 13th and the 14th. So that would be your best shot of heavy snow accumulation for a lot of the Tahoe area in Mammoth up to Shasta is during that, that second storm system. So the first one's small, second one's bigger, and there's a little kink there around 16, 17. We'll have to see if that third storm survives. Okay, my latest snow timeline. Best odds of snow for the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Tahoe, interior BC in the Northeast. So for example, in Colorado, you've got light snow on 12-13. That's the first storm. The second storm, moderate snow accumulations, 15 and 16. In the Wasatch, you've got light to moderate accumulations, late 12 into 13, and then moderate to heavy, 12-15. Um, interior BC, I won't go through all these, but you've got some snow ahead as well. Um, your best shot is going to be on the 14th with moderate to heavy snow accumulations. All right, let's look at Alta, ski area. This is in uh, Utah on the Wasatch Front. This is the forecast mediogram at about 9,000 feet. So the column for today on the 11th Wednesday is dry. Now on the 12th and 13th, here comes the first storm system. So at 9,000 feet, this actually cranks out about six inches of snow. I think that's a little optimistic, but certainly not out of the question. I think potentially three to six inches. Six would I think be at the very top, but three to six, I think is definitely possible. You can see the wind increase, about 30, 35 mile per hour gusts there leading into this front. Um, the main driving wind with this is gonna be out of the, uh, the west, or out of the southwest. So that's not always great for little cottonwood. We'll have to see how that plays out. I like three to six for that area. Three to six up in solitude, Brighton, um, and potentially a little bit less as you go north of there into Park City, Deer Valley, Snow Basin, 
Powder Mountain. But you can see how the winds sort of turn during the event and then come more out of the west and then west-northwest. So I think once the winds turn, that's when we'll see some of the best accumulation up around Alta and Snowbird. So maybe not initially, but then sort of towards the mid and later part of this this snow event. And then it dries out by 13, midday into the afternoon. Um, temperatures leading up to this, uh, highs today at about 27 up there at 9,000, same tomorrow, about 27, 28. Then it turns much colder during the event with teens, stays in the teens for um, all of 13 and might be on the 14th as well. And then there's another storm system coming in, which you don't see off the chart yet. Okay, let's go to Colorado and hone in just a little bit. Let's look at Loveland Ski Area up on the Continental Divide. Your time height forecast for relative humidity, next 72 to 80 hours, a slice through all the vertical layers of the atmosphere. Timelines at the bottom, you read that from right to left. So there's a little bit of moisture, and you can see it there coming in on the 13th in the morning. Um, 13th through the morning into the afternoon, and the moisture fades. It's, it's a pretty narrow area of moisture. It's a quick-moving storm system. So I don't think there's going to be a lot, of, a, a lot of lift with this. But there's going to be some brief snow. In fact, here's the forecast, and I agree with this. About one to two inches of accumulation will probably do it with this storm system. This is closer to one for Loveland, a basin, Keystone, Winter Park, um, Eldora. Um, I haven't seen anything much bigger than one or two inches for most of Colorado out of this first storm system. Um, and about the wind in Colorado. So this is for Loveland wind during the same time frame. Wind today is gusting 30 to 35 up there out of the northwest. Now during the event, the winds are mainly out of the uh, mainly out of the west and gusting up to 30, 35 miles per hour. So we don't have that great northwest flow during this next storm system. The winds are more out of the west. So that changes the dynamics just a little bit. Okay, here is the forecast jet stream. So by close of business today, there it is, by tomorrow, um, you can see it's mainly a west to east jet and it has sunk further to the south and it, so it's bringing in, it's escorting these ripples of low pressure. That's 12-12. There's 12-13. There's 12-14. Next storm system hits California. That's the one with all the moisture and the AR moisture. And then that moves into the interior, and that's probably going to be the biggest storm system between 12, 14, and 15 for a lot of Utah, Wyoming, and Colorado. You can see the dip in the jet sliding through. And then there might be a cutoff low right there on 12, 17, 12, 18 that kind of runs through the, uh, the four corners. Not a lot of moisture with that, though. And then we're just kind of waiting on the next setup. Okay, here is the forecast uh, radar and satellite. So this is by... Uh, 5.30 this afternoon, and, this, and then I've already got it. Let's go back just a little bit. So here we are by 5.30 this afternoon. So we're waiting on this next initial storm system. There it is, moving into California. By tomorrow morning, a little bit of snow up and down the Pacific coast at the, on the high cascades and the volcanoes. And then that moves into the interior. And right there, it starts to slide through late 12 into 13 through the Wasatch and the high Oenas. Some of that will probably clip the Wasatch right there, and then it moves into Colorado. You can see it there through uh, the 13th, mainly central and northern mountain zones. The bigger storm is right there, moving into California. Watch what happens. It still continues to snow. In fact, there's snow all the way up through Washington, Oregon, into B.C. with this thing, and overrunning into parts of Idaho. Here we are by 530. Now, <clears throat> this is going to be the best shot of snow, the heaviest for a lot of Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, and eventually Colorado. This is 12.15 in the morning. Snow moving out of the Sierra as well. Um, here it is starting to build into Colorado. By 12.16, it's still there. And then it starts to break and it moves away. Here's that little southern track cutoff low that runs through the four corners, 12.17, 12.18. Not a lot of moisture with that. And then it kind of moves away. And then the question is, well, what comes after all of this? All right, let's look at snow. Uh, here's my latest forecast. All of today through tomorrow, it's mainly for the West Coast because it's this, this next little storm system. So about two to six inches for the Sierra, one to four up there in the Pacific Northwest. 1213 through 1220, potentially eight to 12 during this time period for a lot of the Wasatch. Higher numbers are Solitude, Brighton, Alta, and Snowbird at about a foot. 
In the, uh, the Sierra, looking at one to two feet from Tahoe down to Mammoth, potentially quite a bit more up around Shasta getting uh, more squarely nailed by the first and the second storm system. In Colorado, again, pretty light with the initial storm, maybe one to two inches, central and north. And then it's that storm system that comes later that delivers most of the accumulation right there, anywhere from potentially three to eight inches. Uh, about 10 to 12 up there in the, uh, the Tetons. And about eight at Big Sky, anywhere from three to six in northwest Montana. The numbers in Idaho still look good, eight to 14. Uh, about a foot, maybe two feet up there in the Pacific Northwest through Whistler, Baker, Crystal, Rainier. Uh, about 10 up there in Revelstoke. Similar numbers through Red Mountain and Fernie. And less as you drop down into Banff and Sunshine. Okay, now up in the Northeast, again, really uh, just suffering from all the rain, cutting down on accumulations today. Uh, maybe some light, very light accumulations on the tail end. And then potentially very light snow down the road. There is going to be lake effect. That'll help to benefit Snow Ridge and some other uh, resorts close to the lakes. But that's about it for the Northeast. Really just the story all about the rain today with this coastal low. All right, we'll end on the big map for the West here. Uh, 1213 through 1220 could be a good period uh, with two potential two, maybe even three storm systems uh, rolling in with the jet stream. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.